Thomas here with Much Props, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am going to premiere a video that I actually made for a con that I was invited to. Plat Effects Con asked me to be a guest speaker. It was an online convention that was held last weekend, if you're watching this currently. And some of you didn't get the opportunity to see that video, so I thought, why not re-edit it a little bit and give it to you here on the channel. So that's what this is. I made three masks for the con. They were all custom based off of a base template, and I just showed various techniques in it, kind of slowed the video down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna keep it slow, but break this up into two videos because it was like 30 minute video. So today I am going to make two custom masks that I made for PlatFX Con using PlatFX paint and some other various things. So let's get to building. Here's the template that I drew up for this build. I have videos on my YouTube channel of how to make templates for yourself. All my templates are free and linked in the description of the videos they go with. This template will be available when I post this video on my YouTube channel. I take my template and trace it onto my materials. Here I'm using six millimeter HD foam from SKS. My templates have a cover page that explains all the markings you see on the pieces. Most of my masks are are symmetrical so just put them label side down and trace them again to get the opposite side. I coat all my edges with contact cement. My brand of choice is Barge. It's a bit more expensive than some other brands, but I always get good results with it. You spread it on all of the edges of your pieces and wait for a few minutes until it's no longer wet. Wear a respirator while doing this. The fumes are very unpleasant to breathe in. The lines all over my pieces are registration marks, which look like you use on the template. These marks will help you to align corresponding parts. Normally I would heat form parts first, but since this is my first build off of this template, I'm not sure which pieces need to be heated up just yet. I left the template orientation up at the top visible, so hopefully it will help you to visualize where parts go. I sometimes also include a picture like this on the template themselves. I freehanded the template of this mask and really wanted an angular mouth area then I just pieced the rest around that idea. Blue highlighted lines on my templates generally mean 45 degree angles inward and green ones typically mean 45 degree outward cuts. Normally I glue up one side at a time but since this template has very few pieces I just did it all at one time. When making a template, I try to reference the areas of the body that it corresponds with instead of assigning each piece a number or a letter. To me, that just 
makes more sense that way. The part that lies on your body is where it goes. Like this under chin piece I'm putting on right now, while it seems like an insignificant piece, it's actually one of the most important. It pulls the bottom of the mask into shape and causes the whole thing to be more rigid. Keep in mind that all of my templates are sized to fit me. I'm six foot three and weigh 235 pounds. I'm a huge headed guy at 24 inches around. So if you wanna build my stuff, you may wanna scale it down to fit you. I have a video on my channel about how to scale templates to fit you using Cosplay Apprentice's ratio calculator, which definitely comes in handy. Surprisingly, the only part that needed heat forming was the forehead pieces. It has a bump in the middle that flares on to the corners, which doesn't sit well on my head, so I heated up that area on top and bottom of the foam, then push it on a round object. My object I use in most of my videos is a glass cover for my back porch light. You can use a foam anvil or some other random round object, it doesn't really matter. Just hit the foam with a heat gun for a few seconds. You don't want to overdo it because you can burn the foam or actually heat it up too much and the seams will separate. Now that the mask base is complete, it's time for detailing. I wanted to demonstrate a couple of different ideas and show you that a template can be a jumping off point to make something custom. My option one idea, I thought just burning some vent holes in the front with a wood burner. I plot out my holes and plunge it in. Wear a respirator and work in a well ventilated area. While doing this, you don't wanna breathe in the fumes from melting foam. It's not good for your lungs. Option two, I decided to use one of Evil Ted silicone molds and embellish the mask with some add-ons. Instead of waiting for foam clay to dry or spending a lot of money on resin, I decided to go the fast and cheap way, filling this mold up with hot glue. Just squeeze the glue down into the mold and wait for it to cool. You can speed it up with an upside down can of air or put a piece of ice on it if you're impatient. Pull it out once it cools off and then trim off the flashing I did three pours of the hot glue through the molds and trimmed them up. Hold the pieces up to areas of the mask to see the best positioning and then simply super glue them into place. Because the casts are flexible, they're easy to stretch over edges and you can fill any gaps that you have with more hot glue.
two coats of Plasti Dip to seal them with. That is my sealant of choice. For my option one build, I decided to do a little dry brushing with some Platifex acrylic paint. I use the Armor Metallics on it, use an old beat up chip brush, dab it into the paint, then wipe most of the paint off on a paper towel. Then simply brush on the paint. I put the Samurai Sword Silver over it all, then hit the edges with the lighter Chainmail Silver. To add a little aged metal effect, I lightly add some Commander Navy Blue and Pyro Red in random areas along with some brown and blacks. I went in and added a little drip effect to each of the holes and really dirtied the whole thing up. Once I was happy with the grime level, I took some of Plaid's Painted Finish Light and Dark Rust, which has some grit mixed into the paint and added it to the mask. While it was still wet, I sprinkled on some spices from my kitchen to sell the rust look even more. I used paprika and turmeric to add that extra little punch. Option two, I put down a gradient layer green to blue using spray paint. Then to finish the paint job off, I use some Platifex gold coin acrylic paint for all the detail pieces. This was the longest paint job of the three because I had to carefully hand paint each individual scroll work and it took about three coats to get it to a solid coverage that I wanted.
since the top kind of V's down onto the forehead, I decided just to put a single horizontal piece of elastic banding for the strapping. I glue on some small pieces of two millimeter EVA to the ends and then sandwich the banding between it and the mask. And we are finished. Here is the end result. I really like how the design of this template came out. Please, please, please give this a try. It's definitely something that a beginner could tackle in a few hours. If you do and you put your own variations on it, please send me a picture of it. Tag me on social media. It really does make my day to see you guys being creative with the templates and putting them to good use. I had an awesome time presenting at Plaid Effects Con. Thank you again to Plaid for being a, uh, a supporter of my channel, giving me free stuff, asking me to test out new products. It is truly humbling to be a part of that community. Um, there are a lot of awesome presenters at the convention. Evil Ted was there, SKS was there, Cosplay Apprentice was there. Dan Cattell was there. There were a number of awesome creators that were giving tips and tricks and all kinds of insight. And I learned a lot from the con. Go big or go home. Thank all of y'all for, for being awesome. But hopefully you'll try and make one of these and your friends will be blown away with your creativity and your ingenuity using spices or random molds or whatever. And you'll do something awesome and creative. That's, that's the point. Maybe you'll get some. Yay! And inevitably, someone's going to ask you, how'd you make that? You can give them one of these. Tell them, much props. You, you know I've got to go with the rust.